Did you know that you can borrow any amount of digital assets from a liquidity pool on Uniswap, but a slight caveat that you need to pay them back in the same block? This is called a flash loan, and in this tutorial we'll look at how we do this in Uniswap v3. We're going to be using a Solidity code here in the remix.ethereum.org IDE, and all this code is open source, you can get it on the Solidity Snippets GitHub repository. So let's dive straight into this and go through the code. First of all, we have the license and the Solidity compiler version, then we're importing an interface for the ERC20 token from Open Zeppelin. We also have interfaces set up for the Uniswap pool and Uniswap factory. Now let's jump into the contract itself, Uniswap flash loan. We're defining some addresses here. The first two are Uniswap addresses. Note these will probably stay the same across different networks. Uniswap are very good at de deploying their contracts to the same contract address on all the different networks. Token 0 and token 1 will almost definitely change. These are going to be different depending on which blockchain you're actually deploying them on. Note that you can't deploy this locally because there's no version of Uniswap v3 running on your local system. So token zero on uh, Corelli testnet, for example, might be wrapped Ethereum, WEF, and on Polygon, that same token will be wrapped Matic. That's for the base asset. And again, the token that you're trading will probably have a different contract address on different networks. So we're going to pass into the constructor the two token addresses and a fee. Every Uniswap pool has a different fee set to it, and sometimes two assets can have multiple pools. So if you've got like ETH USDC, it could have liquidity fragmented across different pools which have different fees. So make sure you're using the largest pool generally. We're then using the factory contract to get the pool address. That sets up the pool and the tokens all ready to go when we run the flash loan function. So this is an external function we can anyone can run. We're passing in a token zero and a token one amount. Obviously, this isn't very secure in production. You want to do this slightly differently, maybe have it as only owner. And then we've got the bytes, memory data. And this is what we're going to pass in to the, we're going to pass this to the callback function for the flash loan. So we're using the pool address with this iPool contract flash, which is passing in the recipient, which is ourselves, the amounts that we want to borrow, and then some data to pass to the callback function. And again, this is represented here where the recipient is ourselves token amounts, and a data which we've encoded using ABI encode here. This goes off and interacts with the Uniswap pool contract, saying I want this, these funds for one block. And then Uniswap will actually send us those funds and call our callback function. This has always got the same name, Uniswap v3 flash callback. And we're passing in the fee, fee one, and then the data that we pass through, which we encoded here. So we can decode this data now to token zero, token one amount, and message.sender. We just use an ABI decode to get these values here. At this point, we're probably going to do something useful like an arbitrage trade or something to generate some funds. We can actually pay back the loan plus the fee. We have to pay a fee to borrow this, even though we're only borrowing it for a very short amount of time. And um, because it's an atomic transaction, if we don't pay back the total amount plus a fee, the whole transaction will get reverted. So there's no real risk to Uniswap for doing this, and that's why they enable it. We then check to see if the fee that they're requesting is greater than zero. If it is, we transfer the amount of funds that we've borrowed plus the fee back to Uniswap. So to run this, you're going to need a little bit of the native tokens in your wallet. If that's WEF, for example, you're going to need some wrapped Ethereum, not just ETH. Okay, so let's go ahead and deploy this. I'm going to go to Injected Provider MetaMask. I'm on the Gorelli test network. These are actually Gorelli addresses right here. So I'm going to pass these into the constructor argument here. Make sure this is set to Uniswap flash loan and deploy that contract. I'm going to sign a transaction. Obviously on Gorelli Testnet, these aren't real funds. This isn't a secure production ready contract that you want to use on mainnet. Once that's been deployed, we've got this contract address here. And the first thing I'm going to do is send this some WEF. The reason is that we've got to pay for the fee. So if we go down to WEF here, and we can get WEF just by going to the contract address on Etherscan and depositing Ether into that contract and you get WEF tokens out. In return, I'm going to post in our contract address for the Uniswap flash loan. I'm going to send 0.01 WEF. So a tiny amount just to cover the fee. Let's wait for that to go through. Obviously, there's no way of getting this back. This contract isn't production ready. It's just for example purposes and for test nets. Note that although we passed WEF in as token zero, it's actually been set as token one because the token value of the uni contract 0x1 is actually a lower value than 0xb for the WEF contract address. This means that it's placed first. So what we need to do with the flash loan is put zero because we don't want to borrow any uni tokens, we want to borrow WEF. Then let's borrow 10,000 WEF tokens. Ask it for a flash loan. 
sign that transaction. What we should see here is the balance check of token one increase. Just wait for that to go through. The standard will be set as zero. If we do the balance check now, you can see we've already got some um, tokens in our wallet from what we uh, sent through. We've also got these 10,000 tokens, which we borrowed from Uniswap as part of this flash loan. That state storage variable is set here. Because we didn't borrow any Uni tokens, this should be still set to zero. As long as we can afford the fees and we can pay this back in the same block, we can borrow massive amounts of capital using these flash loans. And this is used for both good and bad in DeFi. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on the Uniswap flash loans. Please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you're interested in DeFi and developer insights, then subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.